Hello everybody, welcome to another uh, part of this introduction to electronic structure calculations and this is about choosing a DFT theory level for beginners. So I'm going to start describing that uh, density functions differ in how they handle uh, the relation, the exchange correlation term that describes how the exchange correlation energy depends on the density, the electron density. So the different functions are classified in as ranks in Jacob's ladder, which is uh, some biblical reference to go to heaven, which would be the uh, exact description of the quantum mechanics of a problem. Before describing some of them, I want to show on the right a small diagram of different polynomial approximations uh, obtained by a Taylor series that approximate a certain function. The higher the order of the polynomial, the better you can describe a function, a function which may be too complicated or unknown. So basically, a point would be the order zero polynomial description of the function. It's just the value of the function at some point. Then you can have the first derivative, would be this one, that would give you the value and the slope of the function at that point. And then you can go further, second derivatives, third derivatives, etc. So basically, you originally, the first uh, rung is local density approximation. It basically tells that the energy is a function of the value of the density at each point in space. So this is the crudest approximation possible. Then you have the generalized gradient approximation that considers the energy as a functional of the density and the derivative of the density in three-dimensional space. Then you have the meta-GGA functionals, which are also contain a kinetic energy term, which is um, a cheaper way to account for something that is similar to the second derivative of the density. Then you have these all options that can become hybrid. If you mix a certain amount of GGA exchange uh, functions with a, a, a fraction of Hartree-Fock exchange, which is the exact form to consider exchange between electrons, you get hybrid functionals, which are usually better performing, although more expensive than GGA functionals. Then if you combine meta-GGA with Hartree-Fock exchange, you get the hybrid meta-GGA functionals. And then you have double hybrids, which are GGAs that contain Hartree-Fock exchange and an MP2 correction. MP2 is a perturbation theory a correction to Hartree-Fox, which improves energetics uh, quite considerably. Usually, those these functions become more expensive as you go up in the in the Jacobs ladder. So you go down in this list. So I'm going to show a couple of tables and graphs from a very interesting paper by Stefan Grimme and collaborators. That it's a uh, basically the analysis of many uh, functionals. Uh, using uh, the GMTKN55 database for general gr main group thermochemistry, kinetics, and non-covalent interactions. So this is main group. It's not doesn't contain uh, many cases or any cases, I think, of transition metals. So the, the conclusions from this benchmark study do not necessarily translate directly to molecules containing transition metals or complicated uh, electronic structures. So what I wanted to show is an example that the table on the left, table 5, classifies the best three functions of each rung uh, for barrier heights, for different reactions. And you have certain, uh, certain functions, for example, B omega B97XV is a very well-performing hybrid. Uh, I think it's GGA also hybrid, meta-GGA, sorry. Then you have, for example, the Minnesota functionals, 
meta GGA functionals and then double hybrids. But then on the left, there is this overall, uh, the overall best functions of each rank. And you can see that the functions are not exactly the same one. Some of them are repeated, but some of them like rev TPSS is, it was not in the other list. So this is only to show that w functions which are good for certain types of uh, chemical properties may not be good for others. So the best thing is to study and understand why different functions are good for one thing and not for another, and then choose functions accordingly, depending on the problem. Uh, which that doesn't mean that you should be switching functions depending on how good they fit each particular result, because actually that's a bad practice. So here there's a classification histogram of all the functions uh, studied in, in that work that basically plots the weighted mean absolute deviation. So how much this, the results predicted by these functions deviate from some reference data. And uh, on the left, there are the, the higher ranks, the double hybrids, the meta GGA hybrids, etc. On the right, they are the pure meta GGAs and GGA uh, functions. So um, on the table, on the histogram, there is the, the ones marked in red are the three best functions of each rank. And you can see, for example, that the double hybrids seem to perform much uh, more efficiently, or much more, uh, much better than, uh, for example, meta GGA functions without a uh, Hardy Fogg exchange that are in this region. So, for example, some common functionals and some not so common but functionals that I like are marked here. For example, B3 leap is a very famous functional, but it's also a very old function. I think it's from 93. And for example, performs very similarly to PB0 for this overall database. TPSSH performs slightly worse, although it is more expensive than PV0 and Bitrelit because it's a meta GGA hybrid. TPSS0 is similar to T TPSSH but contains a larger amount of Hartree Fock exchange. This is 11%, this is 25%, this is here 25% Hartree Fock exchange, and this is, I think, 20 or 20 point something. And TPSS0 performs slightly better, but not much better. So for example, a really good functional would be omega B97XV. Also, another good function could be M062X. But I want to stress again, this may not be true for all systems, particularly for transition metals. For example, double hybrids contain MP2 exchange, MP2, uh, sorry, MP2 correlation, I think. Uh, MP2 is a uh, perturbation theory, and perturbation theory relies on energy differences between uh, ground and excited states, or in this case, I think, orbital energy differences. So transition metals usually have very close-lying uh, electronic states, and that, in many cases, causes MP2 energies to diverge, and so it, it, for certain systems, double hybrids may not be the best option for transition metals, but I'm not saying that they are not in general. So another important aspect of the calculation is the bas basis set uh, used for different atoms. So the calculation time, but also the accuracy increases considerably by using a larger basis sets. So for example, these are all basis sets for carbon the SBP basis sets has six functions uh, describing different orbitals of the carbon. For example, this D function here, it is a, a polarization function. The DEF2 TZBP has 11 functions describing the different orbitals, contains D and also F polarization. 
and the def2 qzbpp contains Seventeen functions to describe carbon. So you can uh, imagine that the calculations will take longer, considerably longer, depending on the type of calculation uh, and on several approximations. The uh, calculation time can grow either almost linearly to probably quadratic, quadratically, with the uh, basis set size. So for a fast optimization, it would be better to use a small basis set but then for a single point energies it would be a good idea to use the two t set bp basis sets on most atoms and the heavier basis should be left for particularly accurate uh, properties or energies that want to be calculated or special cases or for benchmark studies So, as a, a small general advice is about combination of, of levels of theory, this is very usual, is when you have molecules that are too big to optimize and calculate frequencies at an expensive level of theory, you can calculate, you do the geometry optimization, requesting optimization and fr frequencies with a cheap method. So you get the electronic energy for the cheap method and it gives free energy for the cheap method. Then you take that optimized structure and you only run a single point calculation and you don't request frequencies because frequencies are very expensive. So the more expensive your level of theory, the longer those frequencies will, will take. So you obtain the E electronic expensive. And then to calculate the expensive the the approximation to the expensive gives free energy you calculate basically you take the cheap gives free energy and you add the expensive electronic energy and subtract the cheap electronic energy uh, so the, this will give you a better probably a better um, gives free energy than just the cheap calculation. I also want to say that in many cases it's not so important the absolute energy or the absolute Gibbs free energy of a molecule but in many cases what you want are energy or Gibbs free energy differences or you calculate certain properties from these differences and differences between uh, values calculated with the same method are usually have a lower deviation and are better than the values themselves because different functions have certain systematic sources of error and these are known for many many types of functions and many types of methods they are known if they underestimate certain things or overestimate certain things so basically, for example, if you want to calculate the redox potential, you can use this method, this procedure to calculate the Gibbs free energy of the one oxidation state, the Gibbs free energy of another oxidation state, and then from the difference of those Gibbs free energy, you can calculate the redox potential. So that may be a better approximation. But even better than that is to also apply that same procedure to a reference molecule for which the redox potential is very accurately measured. For example, ferrocene, ferrocenium, or I don't know, some uh, water soluble equivalent, maybe ferrous cyanide would be a complicated system, but it's also its redox potential is quite well known in different media. There are many molecules that can be used as uh, quinones, for example, hydroquinone, etc., can be used as different standards. So basically, then you compare your the calculated redox potential of your molecule with the calculated redox potential of some uh, standard molecule, and then that will give you even a better comparison, usually. So you're taking differences of differences which tend to cancel a lot of errors. So that's a, usually a better procedure. The same, for example, if you want to calculate 
reaction constants, affinity constants, and, and even barrier heights. If you know the barrier height for a certain, very accurately for a certain reaction, which is similar to the one that you're trying to calculate, it would be good to test your method against that, uh, that known and very well studied reaction. So finally, I'm giving here a small uh, set of examples that I use. This is only uh, my personal taste. I don't take any uh, responsibility regarding your results with these options. It's at your own risk and responsibility. This is some general uh, advice. There are many other opinions from other people, so please don't take this as uh, some kind of uh, general truth. So, for example, for a fast optimization, you can use these uh, GGA functions. I'm using currently a lot red PV. Use either of these basic sets. So, def2 SBP is a small basic set, and this def2 SB parenthesis P is the same but doesn't include the same polarization functions on hydrogens. So, it's even cheaper. And then you can use a loose SEF and loose opt for a fast optimization when you want uh, a large molecule that's complicated. That's, this is really, really fast. You can optimize very large molecules like this. Then, uh, slightly more accurate is basically the same, but you don't use loose self-consistent field. Uh, you don't use loose opt, and then you can put, for example, some better basic sets if you have some metal or heavy atoms that are of interest for example could be even chloride uh, phosphorus or stuff if that's an important part of your molecule for you you can put tzbp or if you have a metal then more accurate and even more costly you you go to hybrid functionals then you need to add these other types of uh, conditions you have different options for grids that you should test yourself with what you want and then it's basically the same SBP on uh, light atoms and TZBP on heavier atoms sorry and then the um, more costly alternatives that I usually use on f for single point calculations after an optimized structure I don't do frequencies so you have different options of functions which are considered to be good there are many so this is the most probably the 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 most researcher dependent option so i personally like tpssh a lot because of i have had nice results for many magnetic and other properties of transition metal containing compounds but i don't know if this is a good functional compared with other functions i don't usually do any kind of benchmark studies I have used Omega B97XV for certain specific things in, in, in a work that I actually wanted to check that different functions predicted more or less the same results because I was trying to identify a molecule by its EPR properties. And I tested this function and also gave me good results. And TPSS0 I have used it long ago and also gave me good results. So, and there are many others. I don't like B3LIP. Uh, mainly because a lot of people use it and I, I like to be contrarian or snobbish and well that's it and then so TZBP basic set that's important if you want accurate stuff go to TZBP don't go to QZBPP your calculations will take forever uh, in certain situations it may be necessary or if you're calculating certain properties like nmr or epr properties or many others you can put this in certain atoms but i generally find it super slow it may be good for certain situations really make a difference but i haven't i haven't had that necessity so okay this is all for this video i hope it was useful thank you very much